Hey guys, SCL 3618 here, and tonight for the first time in quite a while, we're bringing you a fresh layout update. Well, it's not necessarily fresh, you can see we've got the same setup, but per always, we're going to go through my usuals, my equipment updates, the room itself, and whatever else I feel needs to fit. So, sit back, grab your Coke, cheer wine, whatever you want to do, and enjoy! Right then, guys, we're going to go to the layout itself real quick um, before I go into motive power and other mess that I'm going to discuss. All right, layout itself. Uh, still the plain Jane three track racetrack design. Um, the only major change is the inner loop. It used to be an S curve right here. Now I've just installed, oops, <laughs> now I've just installed a um, passing siding switch just for the heck of it. I can store cars, run loop, inner loop, whatever. Um, that's about it for the track layout. Um, scenery, we'll get into that real quick. You see a diesel yard, we've got a couple new faces, these are all laid um, vertical, just for ease of picking up, they're much easier to pick up the steam locomotives, which I laid horizontally. You just get the engine tender in both hands and get on the track, you don't have to worry about breaking anything. A uh, little seam, we've got our depot, well not really depot, more so the switch tower. Cheap advertisement, by the way the Hayes are great people in Fayetteville, check out their hobby shop sometime if you're ever down there. Um, a couple yard trucks, that's about it. Moving on down, we've got the the Ben's dealership and the diner. Uh, first start at the diner, you see Plasticville. Got our obvious Pepsi advertisement on top <laughs> in the form of a Mark Lim Reefer. Got a couple Hot Wheels cars in the parking lot, of course, Muscle. And the Ben's dealership has some fun. I have a lot of these cars you see I have customized. Now, whether it be this Corvette where I painted it all, or just the Fast and the Furious Super Mods, you can see I painted the headlights and license plate. Um, Got a couple full of the customs. I'll do a video on those later, but you can see some S2000s, GTRs, yes. Uh, Devil Z, a Nissan 240Z, if you're familiar with that. Two more Skylines. Yes, I love Skylines. They're awesome. Uh, Pagani Huayra, Ferrari F458 Spider, Lambo, 86. And in the showroom, just two tiny cars, I guess. Uh, F40 Ferrari and a Lambo or Venton. So, needs to say, the people in my layout are well stocked on cars. <laughs> Uh, continuing on, we got the old farmhouse scene. This thing's been got three layouts, so it survived. I haven't touched it much. Got a couple of cows and pigs sprawled up the back. Oops, bacon got hit by the train. <laughs> um, carrying on, I got a depot here. Just a couple cars lying around there. Um, the coaling plant, simple enough. I prefer to keep hoppers on this track, as you can see. Um, just a model power uh, coaling station, the lifelike coaling depot. So that's it there. A uh, little TOFC yard, more so just to store. Tiny trailers. I mean, a lot of the cars you'll see on the double stack actually reside there, so that's about it there. Um, continuing on the back, the platform nine and three quarters. I found this in my old Hogwarts Express set. I wish that the engine had survived, but thankfully I have two of the coaches in this to remember it by. A <laughs> um, couple of things. Uh, ooh, a little Easter egg. TARDIS! Ooh. If you're a Doctor Who fan, this is pretty awesome to have, but I'm going to go into these a little bit in a second. You see the back of the diner scene where the camera goes back into focus. Got a little construction area, the crossing, there was some ramps but I was like, eh, screw it. So we're just three tracks and a random hanging cross buck. Hello. Moving on, we got the old depot, you've seen this for years. Now some of you may have noticed it before, you may not have, let's see here, it'll focus. I did this a couple years back and it actually says Hooterville for, yeah there we go. Just for the heck of it, I like the old west styling and it fit Pedico Junction, fair enough. Now just get Sierra Railroad number three and I'll be in business. Um, depot's the same, the water tower. Moving on to the little back corner, we got a small roadway scene. Got a Porsche 911 and a 64 Mustang convertible. Some Lionel billboards. Uh, Atlas Shanty, I just recently painted. Did like a white and green base. Some black ties for HO scale pro ugh, appropriately. Sorry about that. Um, that's about it for scenery. Now, just for the layout room itself, I'll do that real quick. Biggest change O gauge layout, all stored in here. Clean up some space for storage. We'll move on right into that. As you can see, I've got a whole lot of mess scattered here. These one, two, three. These first three containers here, plus the two boxes, are all freight car storage. And I've still got a surplus on the layout, but <laughs> uh, that's about it there. Got some accessories in the back, some Tyco stuff in there stored, um, various other things I need to fix up. Up front, we got our newest project, a Tyco US1 trucking set. I picked that up at an auction here in Four Oaks. So if we get this running, I mean, they're kind of cool. Compared to normal slot cars, whatever, these actually like function like HO scale stuff with the four diverse, whatever. Um, pretty cool to mess with. Three of them, three of the vehicles operate, thankfully, so we'll see if we can get this sucker fixed up and get some videos made. Um, next, really big change. 
the display case. Uh, used to, you'd see it in the back corner propped up against the wall, and now we've got it propped up against the wall here. Um, I do not trust it completely with like all my BLL locomotives, I'm going to keep this on the board. I just keep more so decorative items. Well, the biggest thing of value being the Talus up top and the Freedom Train, but it's a nice little diversity. I mean, a couple coaches up top, some Strasburg coaches, and then the Talus, like I mentioned. The middle two rows are devoted completely to Cabise. This is usually the bicentennial aisle, as I call it. Got a couple things on the layout currently, plus the Freedom Train. So, and the bottom two have the Lego and some other cars. But that's about it for the layout of the room itself. Got some storage updated there. Stacked to the ceiling. My God, what have I done? <laughs> but um, yeah, that's about it. So let's get into the fun stuff. Some motive power. All right, guys. Here we go. With the motive power segment. This is actually one of the reasons I've kind of abstained from doing frequent updates. Namely because I wanted to grow up my fleet a little bit, and I've done a pretty good job. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, I've lined up a couple locomotives, get a look at them as we go. First up, I got this for my birthday. This is a Walters Proto 2000 Alco FA, Union Pacific. Really nice locomotive, it's got a Mars light, headlight beneath it. Smooth runner. The only thing I do not like is that one of the front axles is out of alignment, and whenever it goes along, it has a tendency to hop and skip. But other than that, very smooth runner, looks really good, matches the SD60M perfectly, so we're slowly expanding UP there. Uh, moving along, this, um, for those who watched my 4th of July video, you saw it kind of piddling around with DNS 2000. This is actually also picked up at the train show in March in New Bern. A little AHM unpowered unit, uh, fictionally lettered Seaboard 1776. It's not the U28B, but really I don't care, it's a really cool paint scheme, and I'm a big fan of anything American or patriotic, so fits in my layout well, and maybe I get a knuckle cup, uh, knuckle coupler stick on the back of there, made it with 2000, and have like a slug set. <laughs> um, so that's about it for that. Um, here we go. Of course, we got the Cotto unit. I picked this up on National Train Day. Just kind of giving dates as I go along to give you a time frame. Very smooth runner. Uh, Cotto. I have been hearing the gospel on Cotto for years and how good they were, and I will say I believe it. Um, Kato, very good manufacturer. The paint scheme on this locomotive is wonderful. Detail as well. Um, one thing I did not like was the amount of separately applied details like the grab irons on the front, rear, number boards. Those were easy to install, but for number boards, headlight, and dish lights illumination, that ain't bad. Um, I've enjoyed this locomotive so far. Really good purchase and pleased with it. So I'll recommend it. Hey, if y'all ever find one in a hobby shop, get on the test track, take it home, have some fun with it. Um, so that's all I can say there. The next two were briefly seen, but I'm going to go over them anyways. Basically, we got the Proto 2000 SD60M Union Pacific, train show last year in Raleigh, and of course, this was train show in March, uh, EMD Demo 7000, 70 Mac. I did a review on this guy. This one I've not done, but I probably will in the future. So that's about it for diesels. Uh, steam locomotives. There's a couple, couple little guys I picked up. First things first, for those who watched my model roading on a budget series, I did the Model Power 040T. Surprisingly good little runner. Only inquired this little problem recently, the boiler coming off, but nothing a little super uh, super glue slash modeling glue won't fix. Uh, next up, and a Mahano Mogul ACL. Got that at Christmas. Very nice runner. Um, by the way, guys, if you're ever looking at any of these, TrainWorldOnline.com has a they have a good amount of Mahano still in stock. And considering this is former IHC castings, they're pretty tough. I mean, I picked this Pacific up the year before, so very good deal there. Uh, next up, also Christmas, the Bachman 2102. This was reviewed as well, but I do need to do an updated version because iPod quality was rather shoddy. Um, <laughs> that's about all there is to it. Great runner, still growing strong after this couple months. Um, lubricated the engine a little bit, so it runs great. Now for the biggest thing. Uh, as you can tell, got a Broadway Limited Paragon 2 USRA Pacific. Um, heavy Pacific, I should say. <laughs> Chicago and Eastern Illinois, um, a bit different from my usual road names I pick up, but this is what they had on sale to add the refurbished section on their website, and I'm not one to gripe. I mean, I've seen them going for 220 up in hobby shops. This is 180 flat. Really good deal. I don't have many gripes with the locomotive, but chances are I'm going to do a separate review to it, so you can get all my ideas on the pros, the cons, detail, operation, whatever else. Overall, very pleased. The only thing I've found wrong, right off the top, um... I don't know if it was because I looked at locomotive, idle, lo ugh, locomotive idling so long. The speaker seems to echo horribly with the bell and whistle. Now, it, it kind of smooths out in time, but my, even my blue line engines have this problem. 
I think it's just the speaker base or something, but other than that, I have no complaints. This is a dead solid engine. I mean, worst comes to worst, slap a QSI decoder in there. So, overall, very pleased with that. And with that being said, that wraps up our motor power segment. All right, I'd like to close this off by saying thanks. Um, not only for sitting here through this video, I mean, I know it's long, I mean, it's long for me filming it, but for one other thing, um, just thanks for the support, guys. I mean, that's pretty much, I mean, I'll put this in the camera for perspective. I'm still in shock over this myself. Uh, you see that there, just, you know, 12, 15 subscribers, 4,821,540 video views. Guys, I never thought I could do that. I mean, I mean, y'all saw what I started out with, and... I can't thank y'all enough. I mean, it's been great. It's been quite a ride. And I'm going to keep doing this as long as I can. I mean, I enjoy it. I mean, sure, I'm not the most active when it comes to uploads. But, I mean, reality is going to get in the way sometimes. And that's the truth of the matter. One thing I'd like to end on that note, um, I'm going to do a couple videos asking this, but what do you guys, the viewers, want to see? I mean, I'm giving the reins up to you guys for a little while. I mean, do you want to see some more model rover videos? Because I've got plenty of stuff lined up for that, like some sound dubs, operations, reviews, whatever. I mean, rail fanning, I can. I got plenty of shots for that. Um, maybe some simulator stuff. Trains is still in the works. Um, so please don't comment Cajon Rails, guys. I'm not going to lie. Uh, kind of getting out of that. I mean, it was fun. When I had the inspiration, it was great doing it, but it was a bit of repetitive plots. Music got copyrighted. In fact, episode two, part two, Two, I believe it is, got just got yanked by Sony on the audio. So, I mean, if I do it, it'll be using non-royalty music. So, I mean, the series to me, honestly, wasn't that good. I mean, I was just starting out, and I was kind of copying other guys out there. But I mean, I enjoyed it for what it lasted, and maybe I'll do some shorts or something. Maybe try to get some original content. That's what I'm shooting for, really, is original content. But just drop a little comment in the section below if you what do you want to see. Um, like I said, I'm going to post another video on this, getting the main views out there for those who do not sit through this video. But anyways, thank you guys for watching, um, and for always, this is SCL3618, signing off.